Um, Matt, they also uh, signed a guy that you got pretty familiar yes. with last, uh, over the last weekend at the Frozen Four. It'll be the MVP of the tourney from uh, Union College. I'm not even going to try. I'm going to go right to you. Go ahead and pronounce his name. It's Shane Gostisbehere. Uh, the okay. most outstanding player of the Frozen Four. He had uh, a goal and assist in that championship game. He was a plus seven, uh, which doesn't even register really in my brain. Uh, I think that's an overrated stat, but when you're plus seven, and that means that you were on the ice when your team scored seven goals and you didn't give up a goal. Good. That's that's you know as, as well, if you're plus at, seven for an entire tournament, that's pretty good. Well, I mean, he was plus game. seven for a game. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and even coach, no uh, his coach Rick Bennett afterwards said, yeah, I don't. I don't really like that stat, but yeah, that's that's <laughs> pretty good. So, uh, you know, he's what they've been missing in a lot of regards. He's a puck-moving defenseman, um, which they just overpaid Andy McDonald for today. <laughs> um, and I think he's going to get a shot very soon. Um, now, just as a technicality, because of the fact that the signing came after the end of the regular he's season, not he is eligible, not eligible right, to play. Right, right. He would have right? needed to sign prior to that's the end true. of the regular that's season. Right. Um, I think the plan with him is a little bit longer term. Uh, to kind of get his feet wet. There's a couple guys from the Frozen Four, uh, including the Hobie Baker winner, Johnny Gaudreau from BC, who's a South Jersey native. He signed right Johnny after Hockey. The, yeah, he signed right after the Frozen Four, and he actually scored a goal, uh, I guess, Saturday night for the Flames. Um, but the plan with Gostas Bear is a little bit more long-term, it appears. Um, it's only 20. He's, yeah, he's, he's young. I mean, he's a junior. He doesn't have as much junior hockey under his belt as some of the other guys. So he's a little bit fresher. Um, he doesn't necessarily blow you away with any of the measurables. I think he's about 6'1", so he's not overly big. He's not overly fast, uh, but he's an outstanding He's an outstanding stick handler. Uh, the goal he scored against uh, Minnesota was absolutely phenomenal. He, you know, he comes off, he comes out of, the, I think he came out of the penalty box, stick handles through two guys and rips a slap shot. So he's going to, uh, he's going to be a big part um, of the Flyers' future, I think. He's going to have to get a look. When you look at the way this team is, I mean, You've got Mark Streit, who's creeping up on the wrong side of 35. You've got Kimo Tiemann in as a puck-moving defenseman whose future is extremely uncertain. And you've got Andy McDonald, who I guess has to be there now because you're paying him all this money. But I, I could see him forcing his way into some minutes as soon as next year. His uh, contract actually kicks in next year. He, what, what he'll do is he'll play two games with the Phantoms, their last two games. And, uh, and then practice with the Flyers during the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But his, his entry-level contract kicks in next year. And just to put it in perspective, while Andrew McDonald is making $5 million um, for the next six years each, when Gostas, Gostas Bear, thank you, <laughs> when he gets up here and actually plays for the Flyers, he's going to be making $925,000. Bob Groats, what do the Flyers have to do to win this series? I'll tell you, they're going to have to play with a lot of emotion. And um, I think whoever wins the first game wins the series. I mean, I know it's seven games, but I think this is just huge for the Flyers to, you know, prove that they can win there. Um, otherwise, I don't see it going further than, than six. Mm -hmm. Play with a lot of emotion. Um, they're going to need that, that scoring, too, from all those 20 goal guys. They're going to need that. Um, in terms of um, the rest of the, the elements in that, I, it's a formidable test. I, I just, you know, I, they're going to need a little bit of luck, too. Yeah. They're gonna Where do the Eagles have problems winning? Uh, defense. There. No, I mean building other cities. Oh, what team? Um, on the road. Well, I think actually they do. You've covered the team about 45 years now. Right, so right. <laughs> back a little bit. No, they, they, they've done fairly. I mean, and, and last year, coming off of last year, I mean, the 10 and 6, I mean, you West can't Coast trips. Any, like long streak against No, nah, they, they really the aren't. Yeah, I mean, last year, I mean, they, I they've struggled a little bit on the West yeah. Coast, but uh, no, I mean, they, they've, uh, they've done pretty well, so. Yeah, but I mean, they, they're, they're going to have to do something. I don't know what Barubi would have up his sleeve or something, but, I, you know, I, you just got to get them to remember, to j get them to believe. And I, I like my idea, the film. I mean, show the guys hoisting the cup, even though it wasn't that serious. <laughs> Well, the really guys really skating around, uh, hoisting the Stanley Cup. And out the case yeah. the video oh, yeah. I'm telling you, just get them to believe. Whatever the keys are in this series, it's going to take a while to do it. Uh, if this thing goes to seven games, which it very well could, uh, it starts Thursday night. They will literally go two full weeks to Wednesday night, April 30th. Is this just a, a figment of like most pro sports now and they play when TV tells them to play? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. they... 
Yeah, and and it's always been that way. I mean, they, they yeah, actually have a little bit more moment. contract now. Um, they do a lot to basically two weeks per series um, for that very reason, and and also because of stadium conflicts like this series has. Yeah. This series has. I can't believe they moved Miley Cyrus. Yeah, I can't either. <laughs> I, you know, I'm disappointed too. It changed I, all my whole, all of my plans changed. We're gonna get her to go on yeah. the line with Ronaldo. Was, She's a bangers and all. I was that, going you know. to a concert. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, they have that, they have Billy Joel, they have uh, Sher yeah. in w sure. Wells Fargo. They, they have two of those can teams she pair that with, we Can ignore. she pair with Luke Shen or no? <laughs> they have the wings, they have, uh, you know. It, there's a lot of things involved with this. But yes, TV overrules everything. TV decreed that nobody was going to be at home for Easter Sunday right. with their families. We're going to skip two days and then play up in yeah. New York for game two. Yeah, there's a long gap in there between yeah. game one and, and two. And you got those other series, too. They so want to yeah. pick out the good games and highlight them, too. I mean, <clears throat> Matt, I wanted to uh, get a chance, since we are, in fact, here at Widener in the city of Chester, where there is, in fact, another pro team that actually operates and plays its home games here in Chester. Give us a quick update on the Union. Well, they will be in New York uh, tomorrow night. They have a midweek game against the Red Bulls. Uh, the Red Bulls, who are still looking for their first win this season. The Union only have one, so neither team is really setting the world on fire. It's going to be a, a matchup of two teams that uh, think that they've played better than the results have indicated this year. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, that's true to some degree, um, but both teams are at the point where they need to start getting some results. Otherwise, they're yeah. going to see things maybe get out of hand a lot. And it's, uh, it's a place that the Union have had some trouble uh, playing. They uh, got a draw there last year, and that's really their first result there. So it'll be a, it'll be a hostile environment. Uh, we'll see how much Red Bull draws on a Wednesday yeah. afternoon, but, or Speaking Wednesday evening. Speaking of uh, draw, the uh, attendance holding up here at PPL Park? So far, so good. Uh, they've had a couple of uh, not too pleasant weather days. Uh, mm -hmm. The Montreal Impact game a couple weeks ago was absolutely torrential rain. Um, but a better day on Saturday, and uh, the place was pretty full. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's something that, as the season progresses and yeah. as people start to realize that the season's back, you know, more people will flock there. Uh, last week uh, we talked about, or actually it was two weeks ago, we had the mayor in and talking about the state of the city. And one of the things that I wanted to talk to him about was, in fact, from my end of the, uh, uh, the coverage of it, is the relationship between the union and the city, which has been a little bit uh, touchy uh, in the last uh, couple of months or so. In fact, we had one of the most amazing turnarounds I've ever seen. We had, I believe, on a, a Monday early in the week, the CEO of the union, Nick Sikiewicz, saying things had fallen apart with the city and there's no question about it. We're looking outside the city to build our new practice facility. Two days later, they were saying, everything's fine. We're building it right next door to PPL Park. Uh, I asked Mayor Linder what happened in those two days, and he basically said that they sat down and talked. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah, I think the quote that uh, we had gotten that day from, uh, I don't believe it was Mayor Linder, but someone in his office was that the, uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease and that Nick was doing a lot of uh, <laughs> squeaking on Monday. Uh, it seems as though there's been a little bit of a detente in the relations there. Um, the plans um, are a go-ahead for uh, the practice facility adjacent to the stadium as it is, which is something that the union have long coveted and uh, long sought to have happen. This um, means, I guess, that they're in fact not moving into the rear end of the Daily Times building for their indoor practice that facility? It, no, unfortunately <laughs> we're going to have to find something else to do with that. Um, but yeah, that, that wouldn't help their commute issues all that mm -hmm. much. Uh, but I think right now they're in a, a better place. Uh, they've kind of come to terms with the realities of the parking arrangements that have kind of changed in recent mm -hmm. years. Um, the city's doing some improvements down there. I think there's a couple other uh, avenues of uh, access to the uh, parking lots that have been right. paved, and yeah. those will soon be available for uh, spectators down at PPL Park. So I think uh, things are a little bit better than they were. And about I that squeaky wheel, yeah. the uh, it was just kind of recent news that the Sixers were planning a practice facility to be built at the Navy Yard yeah. in South Philly. Until this afternoon when all of a sudden I the story that. broke. Nah, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so they might be looking for a little yeah. money action too.
Uh, Bob Roach, your team uh, certainly is never out of the news. Uh, what don't we know or what didn't we know about the whole uh, Deshaun Jackson affair? Is there anything that we don't know or is it pretty much what it is? I think, I think it's what we do know right now and that's that Chip Kelly just, he doesn't want Deshaun Jackson on his team. Yeah. That's the obvious. Um, it, whatever the reasons are, it'll come out in a while, but it's pretty safe to say that. I mean, can you imagine another team, you know, just getting rid of their best, yeah. well, the Nothing union. <laughs> the union gets rid of their best <laughs> players. The well, best players. That's a fact, job. A but, but they at least little, get but. something for them. Yeah, they trade yeah. them, you know, to the West Coast. So, but I'm, th but that is, that is unusual. I mean, uh, and we all know that, but, you know, he came with the franchise. Chip didn't pick him, so. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what we do know. It'll come out, though, it, it, and it'll be interesting, I think. It'll give you some insight. Rob, you have uh, two days of previews coming up. Give the uh, viewers a, uh, an idea of what's coming up in the next two days setting up the series. Um, you get a fearless forecast of how every series will come out. If I get 50%, I'd be shocked. <laughs> um, we will have a, a main story on the movement today with signing a couple of defensemen, yeah. one, one very talented kid and one pretty talented veteran player for a lot of money. Um, and also just kind of an overview about how these teams match up. Yeah. And uh, again, and, you know, I'll, I'll put it out there, I just, between the defense and the goalie, the Flyers are going to have to kind of do a lot of makeup work really fast on New York. Otherwise, they're a pretty close yeah. match. No, yeah. And I think it'll go at least six games and yeah. probably seven. Uh, we'll go to end the show the way we always do with our lightning round. Uh, not uh, really uh, much of a mystery to this question. I'll go right down the panel and I'll put them, uh, put them down here. Uh, let's make our predictions. Round one versus the Rangers. Rob, you're up. I think Rangers in seven. I think that home ice thing really will have an effect in this series. Matt? I got to go Rangers in six unless the Flyers are able to somehow escape this first two games uh, at Madison Square Garden with a win. Yeah. Uh, it could be a short, shorter series. I like the Rangers in six, unless, unless Baruby gets one of those former Flyers to stand up in front of the team and start <laughs> shouting and pounding the, the table and all that and uh, get some, whoever wins the first game, I, I like a lot. There's no shortage of former Flyers who yeah. will stand up and shout. Absolutely. And Bob yeah. is actually just the Who's the big defense man? The Flyers. I, uh, I'll, be the, uh, I'll be the odd man out, and I'll go uh, Flyers in seven. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to make a mention, uh, make sure uh, we are finishing up a week's worth of our latest All-Delco teams, and tomorrow is, in fact, the big-time All-Delco boys hoops team, and the city of Chester, no doubt, will be well represented on that team, so make sure you pick up a copy of the Daily Times and look on delcotimes.com tomorrow. Uh, our thanks, really deep thanks to Dan Hansen and the staff here at Widener. We've had a tremendous run uh, here this semester. We're hoping to be back in the fall. We'll be back uh, in September uh, with another series of uh, Live from the Newsroom. Next Wednesday night, uh, we will be previewing another All Delco team, the High Q team that we select uh, in conjunction with the High Q tournament, along with the Teachers of Excellence Awards. That's in advance of the Partnership for Excellence Dinner in Education. Uh, that will be held on May 1st, and that will be next Wednesday night. We are live from the newsroom every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. We'll be back next week. We'll talk to you then. Thanks.